Hi YouTubers, this is going to be a follow-up video uh, to a bug out bag long-term survival pack and uh, I basically compiled all the suggestions and uh, comments from the previous video and I prepared this uh, inch bag which stands for an I'm never coming home bag. Uh, so I'm going to go through all the items uh, with you and uh, hope you enjoy the video. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. This guy's got a different shirt on, so what the heck's going on? Actually, what I did is I actually shot this video last week, and I utilized the introduction from that video, and I wanted to reshoot this video because I made a few uh, decisive changes uh, to the equipment, and I also wanted to take the opportunity to uh, give you a little bit better explanation of the items contained herein are items that I have ultimately, after much deliberation and thought, uh, that I've decided that I would carry with me. Um, one of the biggest hurdles to get over was the weight because when you're never coming home there's a crap load of stuff that you'd want to have with you. So I focused uh, mainly on the survival aspect and eliminating a lot of things that I considered would be um, more luxury items. I know there's people that's going to ask me, you know, why did I leave out the Lifesaver 4000 bottle uh, purification system, and why did I leave out the snare, snare wire, and I'll catch a lot of flack uh, because of that. So I made a video uh, going over the items that I chose to opt out when I bug out, and I'll put a link to that in the description. Also, uh, you can find in the description a link to my 72 hour bug out bag. Um, it's a lot different and the items are a lot different from what I have on my back now which is uh, my inch bag and a I'm never coming home bag. So we'll get started and we'll go over the items here. And to start I've got a bolt action 22 rifle. Now one thing, uh, a couple items that I always keep on me um, is a really good Leatherman Surge multi-tool has all kinds of saws and knives and gizmos and gadgets on it, so that's really cool. You can check out a video review of the Leatham and Surge. Um, I always carry a Bic lighter on me. I always carry a, a good Cree flashlight, um, like 900 lumens here. Uh, working my way around the outside of the bag, I've got a Camelback 3-liter uh, hydration uh, water bladder here, so that's holds plenty of water. On the bottom of the pack is um, this is a Mountain Hardware. Um, they call it the Lamina. It's a zero-degree synthetic bag. On the side here, uh, this is a Condor Ripaway blowout bag. It's a this is basically a trauma bag. I'm not going to go through the comp, the contents of this. I already made a video review of this blowout bag, so I'll just set that to the side. Working our way around, I've got a Glock 27 chambered in 40 caliber. I've got readily accessible uh, two extra magazines uh, for the Glock. I've got a very an excellent knife. It's a ESEE five, made from Ontario. Former rat cutlery. This is a great knife, carbon steel. Got a lot of meat behind it. Very excellent knife. This. If someone were to ask me what's the best knife in a, any kind of bug out situation, I would su highly suggest this knife right here, and I'm not getting paid for any endorsements to that company. I've got a decent compass. It's from Walmart. I mean, like I said, it's decent. But there are other ways to um, check your bearing. And I'll go ahead and open the outside of this mesh pack. Now inside the mesh um, I've got a set of Columbia um, gloves. I've got the famous uh, Woodland Camo Military Poncho wrapped up 
on the inside. We've got a pair of sweatpants and thermal leggings. Okay, I went ahead and spread the uh, military poncho out and I'll lay some items out on that. And that's all for this uh, pouch area here, so we'll work our way into the um, main part of the bag. And uh, I've got this large wet bag here, so I'll, I'll show you what's inside of that. Alright, the items that came out of that green wet bag I laid out here. I've got two wool socks, a wool face mask, and wrapped in those, I've got a hand crank flashlight, a regular uh, Cree flashlight, and um, double and triple A batteries wrapped in duct tape. Here I've got a Coleman headlamp. And for cold weather, uh, I've got a um, an ugly ass sweater that my grandma gave me uh, for Christmas last year. And uh, i got a Hollister uh, insulated shirt. Okay, shirt. next up inside of the main portion of the bag, I have individually laminated um, printouts of uh, wild edibles in my area. And I know some of this is, um, you know, kind of obvious. Whoop. This is arrow root. Um, but when you're in a survival situation and you can't really think clearly, it's good to, you know, have some visually identifiable references with you. And I'll probably continually expand on this list here. Of course, we need to stay hydrated, and uh, that's why I chose the uh, the clean canteen uh, it's a wide mouth edition um, it's a stainless steel and it's the perfect stainless steel container for boiling water next we'll reach in here there's a container full of all kinds of goodies in a in a I'm never coming home situation we'll go through these items here okay the items that came out of that uh, toffee container uh, I've laid out Basically, this is a, uh, it's just a sponge with a scrubber on the back. Some first aid and a septic solution. We've got a diamond uh, knife sharpening stone. i got some hops uh, lubricating oil for the guns. This uh, toothbrush is specifically used for um, uh, cleaning the guns, brushing uh, gunk out. i got five bobbers, and i got a little fishing kit here. All the weights and hooks are uh, separated, and it's a good little container. Uh, I've got a Monster Energy drink cap, and the reason I brought this along is because um, it makes a good spindle for uh, for a bone drill friction fire. I got two pencils, and the reason I brought the super glue is because I can use those as uh, like a liquid bandage in case I get a a, uh, a cut or something. It's basically a liquid bandage. Next up, we got some uh, gulp, and this is one of the items after deliberation chose to officially make this part of my. I'm never coming home bags because um, you know it, it's never there when you need it. So there it is. It doesn't weigh a lot. Like it or lump it. I got a uh, toothbrush. I did not include any toothpaste in this uh, in this bag because it's a luxury item. I have three books and matches that I've uh, stuffed all of them with more than 32 in the boxes. Um, I have one bottle included of potable um, water tablets. I have one chapstick, and I have a little micro compass here. Okay, for shelter, I chose a uh, thirty-dollar hammock that I got from Walmart. Uh, it's a nylon hammock, and uh, it says it's rated up to three hundred pounds. And I've seen YouTube reviews uh, of this holding a whole family, so uh, and it's very comfortable. It gets you up off the ground and um, this is something that you cannot duplicate in the wild. I had a hard time deciding between a tent and you know more tarps, yada yada. So I chose this. You cannot really duplicate this in the wild, and it's pretty durable. And I can always use the tools that I'm about to show you uh, to you know m make other ground shelters. And it should be the last thing that's in this pack is um, an orange wet bag with the following items. The items that came out of that orange wet bag, I've got a notebook here, and uh, I went ahead and decided to, to include that because I like to be able to run calculations and calculate my walking speed, you know, whatever it may be. So there's some writing material. Uh, I've got about a hundred, hundred feet of paracord there, maybe 150 feet. I have one scrubbing glove, 
Um, so this kind of doubles as a hygiene kit. I left out the soap because I thought it was unnecessary, but it's nice to be able to uh, scrub the bacteria off your skin. I've got a couple uh, more hundred feet of paracord, probably another 150 feet right there. I've got a map of a um, topographical map of an undisclosed bug out location. This is a little instruction pamphlet on the compass. I've got a copy of the U.S. Constitution. Will I ever actually need this? Probably not, but it's good reading material. And it doesn't weigh a lot. This is a, a face net to keep the bugs out. This is a American flag bandana. Um, a few different uses for this for identify, identifying purposes. And another uh, bandana. Some unwaxed dental floss. Got a whistle here. Three purpose whistle. And I know it's uh, kind of stupid, but it doesn't weigh anything. And you know, why not have a little instruction, a little survival manual from Bear Gorillas? Okay, we're going to jump into the lower part of the bag here. And the first item that I'm going to pull out is uh, this is a Gore-Tex bivy. It's uh, part of the modular sleep system currently issued by the military. And uh, it does have a lot of weight to it, but I included it because the ability to stay dry, uh, I think, would be invaluable. And that, the Gore-Tex bivy will do very well. Um, I have one box, 50 rounds of uh, 40 caliper ammunition. I have a box of about 550 rounds of uh, 22 ammunition. I have uh, some 20 pound fishing line. And I know I've got the paracord, but uh, have you ever tried to um, get spool the, the individual lines out of paracord, uh, especially if you want about 100 feet of it? Man, it's a pain in the butt just to get some get some string. That does not weigh too much, so I went ahead and included that. Next up here, this is a saber cut saber saw. It's a, basically a hand chainsaw. Lots of reviews on this. Um, it requires a lot of effort, but you know, hey, it's a hand tool, so what do you expect? Get in shape. Next in line of tools. Um, for saws, we have a Baco Laplander. There's the Baco. It's a great folding saw. This right here is a it's a day pack. It's a little roll-up backpack that I got from Walmart. It doesn't weigh hardly anything, but a few grams probably. So I went ahead and included that. Got some aluminum stakes. I think these are uh, necessary. Yeah, you can use sticks out in the wild, but they break. And those just go into the ground a, a whole lot easier. And uh, it's an instant problem solved. And, of course, there's a, there's a few items in this pack that I would probably eliminate if I needed to, if I couldn't carry everything. And it was too heavy. But, I mean, geez, the tent, tent sticks don't weigh a lot. Things that... I don't know if I'd eliminate or not, but I did decide to go ahead and include, um, and I think that are very necessary for trapping some food, is uh, some Victor rat traps. And last up, the main portion of the bag, this is a little pocket shovel. I did get it from Walmart better than nothing and doesn't weigh a whole hell of a lot and there's the uh, last of my kit guys all right one thing that you guys will probably notice automatically notice that I did not include in the cinch bag is food and a person can go about 30 days without food so I figured that I got my 22 I got some fishing supplies got some traps and uh, I'm not afraid to eat grasshoppers and grubs and stuff so uh, for the bulk for the weight I figure it's unnecessary to carry also the reason I didn't carry food is such as an MRE is because 
you know, that solves an immediate problem, but it's not going to solve the long-term problem. When you're, and when we're talking about a I'm never coming home bag here, we're talking about long-term sustainability, and I better find a way to get food um, on my own, utilizing the equipment that uh, I pointed out, and even other uh, bushcraft ways. And so that's why I did not include food. So, uh, to clear that up. You might also consider grabbing yourself an axe. Thanks for tuning in my video guys. Um, as always, I want you to subscribe and definitely look out for some more videos coming up. I think I'm getting the hang of this YouTube thing.